My name is Keith Warren. I host a television program called The High Road. It's a hunting program and for over 30 years I've traveled around the globe and been fortunate enough to hunt big game animals everywhere. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about hog hunting. I love hunting hogs and hogs are, uh, are something that must be hunted. In the south uh, hogs are a real problem. I say there's two different kinds of places. There's places that have hogs and places that will soon have hogs because hogs are just moving so much. Uh, what the, the deal is about hogs is 50 years ago we didn't have hogs in much of the south like we have now. What happened, the pork prices went so far down that the farmers, they didn't want to keep their hogs so they just turned them loose and hogs adapted very well. Um, the, the problem with hogs is, is they adapted too well. Uh, they can live anywhere and they, they can live on anything. They're kind of like coyotes. I mean, they, they can root around, they, they, eat, they eat anything they want to eat and uh, they're destructive. They destroy habitat. They're, they destroy farm fields. They, they, uh, uh, so farmers don't like them. They, they eat turkey eggs and quail eggs and uh, they, they, they're just destructive. I mean, people say that they've uh, they found uh, white-tailed fawns that they'll wind up killing. Uh, they go through fences. You can't, you, I mean, hogs multiply rapidly. Uh, I hear a lot of stories about these hogs that people say a hog will have, uh, you know, eight to ten babies. Well, let me tell you something. I've killed, I've killed hundreds or maybe as many as a thousand hogs. And I can tell you something, uh, it is very rare to find a sow that has more than six babies in it. Uh, I've, I've had one that's had seven babies in it. And I mean, I, I've seen a lot of them. Uh, so when you hear these stories about people saying that they, they have, uh, 8, 10, and 12 babies, I, I kind of question that. But they do have lots of litters. Uh, the cool thing about a feral hog, they get big fast. And within a year, if they have enough nutrition, they're going to be 100 pounds. I mean, they're going to be 100 pounds, and, and that's uh, a lot of meat to put on the ground. In many areas, uh, there's no limit on hogs. Uh, uh, you have to have a hunting license in most places. Uh, but uh, it's, it's not a game animal, so you don't, in Texas where I live, you don't even have to have a big game uh, license, it's just a non-game license. Hogs range uh, anywhere from uh, Texas all the way up through Oklahoma, they're in Kansas, Missouri, uh, some places in Ohio now have them, I've heard places in Michigan have them, like I said, there's two different kind of places, places that have them, places that soon have them, so feral hogs are, are uh, they're, they're a nuisance in many areas, a lot of people hate them, but hunters, the hunters that, uh, that I know, they love them because we love to hunt them and we love to eat them. As far as best time of year to hunt them, I like hunting hogs when there's not a lot of natural forage for them. So late in the winter when uh, the fields have already been picked and the hogs and the deer and everything else pretty much eating all the grain out of the field uh, and there's not a lot of greenery out there, that's the best time I like to hunt them. Uh, a hog's got pretty decent ears. He's got pretty decent eyes. He can see movement. Uh, but he's got an unbelievable nose and it's for that reason that if you're going to be a hog hunter you better be concerned about your scent because I promise you, you may be able to get away with a white tail maybe smelling you a little bit and then, and then coming back but I can promise you if a hog smells you he's not coming back. Uh, a hog for whatever reason, I mean they can put their nose in the most awful smelling stuff and they can still smell a human being so do everything you can to reduce human odor and hunt with the wind in your face. Always if you can do that, that that's a good tip. If you're going to hunt hogs I want to encourage you to uh, respect them. Hogs are smart. Uh, if you pressure them too hard I talked about uh, if, if they smell you you're not going to get a second chance but if you pressure them if they know you're there uh, you're not going to get a second chance. I mean, so you need to be quiet. You need to move slowly. Good camouflage. I like to wear that. But uh, the the deal is about a hog. Uh, when people pressure them too much, they become nocturnal. And hogs love coming out at night because uh, hey, where are most hunters at night? They're at home and in bed. Okay, it's for that reason what we've wound up doing. We we get this uh, night vision and thermal vision equipment, and we have been extremely effective because now all of a sudden, when the hogs are coming out to do their destruction. Uh, at nighttime and feed around on these fields and move around, that's when we come in and we do it with this night vision and thermal vision equipment and it's absolutely phenomenal. Let's talk about shot placement. Uh, shot placement on a hog is something that, that uh, I don't think anybody wants to wound an animal and a hog is built like a little tank. Uh, the very front end of a hog, I mean uh, the, the front end of the hog is deep because of the chest and a hog basically has no neck. Uh, the back end, the butt end is, is kind of small. Well, the, the, uh, the, so the sweet spot where you want to shoot the hog is in the, in the chest, up high and uh, up in the heart area. Uh, I think too many people wind up shooting them too far back like a white-tailed deer, so you want to shoot them kind of 
forward and, and I like to shoot them a little bit low compared to a white-tailed deer because that way I can put it in the heart. I like to make a shot, especially with an arrow. Uh, what I'll wind up doing, I like to get a, a broadside shot. I don't like shooting one that's, that's facing me with an arrow. I want to get a broadside shot so I can go straight through it. Many times I'll wait till it opens up like this with one leg so I can get past that shield on one side and put an arrow through it. Um, as far as mechanical or fixed blade broadheads, I mean, it's, it's, it's a preference. I mean, some people prefer one over the other. Uh, shot placement is everything. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, if you're a rifle hunter on a feral hog, the best place I like to shoot them is right between the eyes or right at the base of the ear. When you do that, there is no tracking. They go down instantly. Let's talk about uh, effective range and how far you ought to be when you, when you hunt hogs or when you hunt any animal. Uh, first off, I, I want to encourage you to become very proficient with whatever you're shooting, whether it's a, a bow, a handgun, or a long gun. Become uh, knowledgeable about what your limitations are and also your, your equipment's limitations are. Uh, all too many times you'll see videos on, online or you'll go on TV and you see these guys making long distance shots and they do so very effectively and it makes it look easy. It's not easy. Uh, those guys that are doing that have spent a lot of time becoming very good at it. And so don't think that you as a, as a beginner or even a novice can reach out there and do that kind of stuff because the last thing you want to do is wound an animal. If you've never done that, it's a, it's a, it's a bad feeling. It's a sick feeling. And so what I would encourage you to do is, is make sure and pay attention to their nose, their eyes, and their ears. And you want to get as close as you can. Okay, if you can, as a bow hunter, I like to get 20 to 30 yards just because at 20, 30 yards, I know I can, I can hit a very small target with a, uh, with a rifle, I encourage people, if you're shooting a small target, you're shooting at the base of the ear, you're shooting between the eyes to drop them instantly, I mean, get close. So you want to uh, respect their senses and you want to get close. So I'd encourage you, don't take long distance shots at stuff unless, unless you have to, unless you're prepared, you know what you're capable of and you know what your equipment is capable of.